I'm Joe Pimenoff. I'm from Luminec Displays, and today I'm going to talk about transparent displays. Where they come from, what they do, what they look like, what can you do with them. Um, Luminec Displays, it's a Finnish company. We have a certain product, I'll be talking about them during the presentation, and uh, we can take it from there. First of all, if you see a transparent display, chances are you'll stop and have a look at it, because transparent displays do have a certain magic in them. I'll touch a little on that, what makes them so special. And they're special, great, they, they, you could call them cool or, or just neat, but can you also do something else that isn't just cool or neat? Something that has a more functional meaning to it or a, a use. Then, what technologies are available today? LCD, laser projection, OLEDs, etc., etc. And then some future prospects. And having said that Luminec is from Finland, our distributor, Compotech provider, is here today at the fair. So if you want to talk more with me or about transparent displays after the presentation, you're very welcome to their stand at uh, 0452. It's very close. The magic of transparency. Um, if you've seen the film Avatar, they have lots of transparent displays. If you see uh, futuristic pictures or visions of, of uh, the world, usually they use a lot of glass, transparency and also functionality. There is an essence of it and somehow I feel that it has to do with basically the glass. Glass is something that's fused together from sand, you have soda, lime and silicate and you fuse it together in a very high temperature you get glass. Glass is transparent which is in a sense making something completely opaque Transparent is like magic. It has always fascinated people and man. Hence, people have always been playing with the idea of using a display on glass, either just putting shabloons on it to make it have a functionality or a decorative uh, meaning, or then something really technical. And now, today, we have technologies that make this possible, to go even deeper in technology and make it alive. This picture is, is a simulation, or just an illusion. Um, so is this, yet it looks interesting. You'll have a look at it and you'll think, how do they do that? Well, they don't. Basically, they've put pictures of the background on the screen, and that's why it looks like you're looking through it, but in fact, you're just looking at a picture. It's, it's easy to do that, but could you do that for real? This is a screenshot from uh, Corning made, at least they've made two YouTube, YouTube videos, a day made of glass by Corning, 2011. If you Google that on YouTube, sorry, you, YouTube, it, it's, I think it's about five, six, seven minutes of a day filled with functional glass surfaces. Every surface in the car is functional. You can dim the windows at your home. They're photocatalytic, they're photovoltaic everything to do with glass. Glass is neat. The picture here shows a lady that's at a bus stop and she's looking at a, an interactive glass uh, bus stop which you can see the time schedules, the maps, etc. That can't be done yet. But chances are that in 10 years it can because development is very quick. Um, let's go into something you can do today. We can do that with our technology. I'll talk more about it later, but this is a simple monochrome color display integrated or laminated into sheet window glass. What's the functionality? Well, might not be that valuable to her to know what the weather and wind is outside, but these are the first attempts to put transparent displays into real use. Can you make it more valuable, the added value then? Well, look at the picture here. You have a hospital environment, you have two incubators, Cuversa, and uh, you have patients in them. It's critical for when a doctor is looking at the patient that it can see what it's doing and can perhaps also see oxygen saturation, the temperature, the humidity. They're critical issues in, a, in, a, in an incubator. But you can see the red digits over here. This is how it's done today. You have it down there, so basically you don't have the data in your line of sight. 
we can do this display where you put it on the top surface the doctor it can be even controlled by a proximity switch when the doctor comes or whoever's going to do something it illuminates so it's a window but it has a function and that's turning the display paradigm the other way around it's not a display as a window it's a window with a display it sounds simple but that's one way so that's the magic of displays in transparent world and where we might be able to take them but what technologies can take us there we don't manufacture all of these so I'm not an expert on all of them but we do know on a layman term something about all of them transparent LCDs passive and TFT projection displays they've been used in the military a long time and some also in head-up displays in cars transparent OLED of course OLED is coming and transparent TFEL. TFEL stands for Thin Film Electroluminescent Display. That's the one we make. Um, what we have to be quite honest about is that each and every one of these display technologies has a specific benefit, or many. They might be cheap, they might be easy to manufacture, they might be full color. Or then, it might have a weakness, it might be too expensive, you might be only be able to get one color, or then it isn't durable, or then it isn't really transparent. But luckily, they're all finding some part of the market for themselves, transparent passive LCD. One color, non-emissive, that means doesn't send light, so you need a backlight, or then it's a bit dim, less than 40% transparency on anything you can buy today and mostly in a small size. You see them on, on gadgets like this. I've stolen pictures from here and there where I feel they are good representative of this technology, so you'll forgive me for that. Um, segmented displays, they're usually very low cost. For a gadget, you would expect that. Not that technical and that not high-end, but still they fill a function and that's fine. If you go to the next technology, transparent thin film transistor LCDs, we have a good, a good start. It's full color. You can do a full normal picture of what you want to show. However, there's a price you pay for it. It's around 10% transparency. Window is about, one window pane is around 90% transparent to visible wavelengths. That's 10 or less. So it's not really transparent. You can get it in bigger or smaller sizes, it's cheaper than anything else that is in transparent technology, but you do need an extremely strong light behind it to see what is behind it. It's used in, therefore, it's used in applications where you don't really need to see anything except exactly what's immediately behind it. This is a showcase that's used many times in shows, and if you open the box and see the light inside, you will be surprised. It is an extremely strong light in there, so that you can basically see what's inside. But it has its function too. Then, rising, raising the quality and the, and the demands, requirements, one notch, you get to a projective technology, projective LCD. You can have it as a full color or monochrome. The picture is, well, as the name says, you have a projector somewhere and via some mirrors or some lenses it's magnified or collected and collimated and projected on a screen. That screen usually has to be dedicated, a special type of glass or a special angle or something like that. It's very bright and as you're basically looking through the window it's being projected to, it's very transparent. Some tricky things of it is that it's rather complex and also if you have a vibration at one end of the projection, the projector vibrates, then it is also enhanced and magnified so that the picture itself might vibrate visibly. So it's, it's tricky to put them in, 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 let's say, very mobile devices. Projective laser, we're talking rather expert level here. You can have full color or monochrome. Um, the same benefits, you can get even clearer pictures or even uh, brighter ones. And that's why you see them in professional use, they're very expensive. This you could see in a fighter, an air, air, aircraft fighter. 
That's from an avionics company, and this is on an FA-18. The site on an FA-18. So you can see the green digits are all projected via a laser system in the front cockpit. I can't see those coming to, per to, 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 to normal passenger cars, but these fill a very critical function in, uh, in military, in one aspect. Transparent OLED. OLEDs are beautiful displays. You can get a great array of colors. They're very bright, at least they are in the beginning, if it isn't intended to be for a long duration. You get full color. As far as I've been able to see, there is nothing commercially available that you and I can buy off the shelf as a transparent OLED today. But there are samples in lab and lots of work being done. Transparency is quite good, 4270. But there also lies a, a, a challenge in the variation in transparency. Some even say that it in a one display it might even vary a bit. So it isn't, it's difficult to control the organic display that well. Small to medium size, but you can get some neat work done of it. That's like a laptop display, or then a navigational aid for a car, a head-up display with multicolors, very clear, and nice contrast. So there's development here too. Well, then we come to this one. Transparent electroluminescent display. It's based on a technology that has been around for a long time. It's monochrome. You can have any color you want as long as it's yellow. We do do green, and if we filter it, but we can do green, and if you filter it, you can get red and another type of green. So if you go to see the Computex stand, you'll see a multicolor uh, TFEL. It's emissive. This is a light that you're putting on and off. It's not a projected screen. It's it hasn't got a liquid crystal, it's nothing like it. It's basically a light you're turning off and on. You can get these in matrix or in segmented displays. What's the beauty of it is, it's made on glass. And glass is transparent, intrinsically. And the display, the entire display, all the stacks, the thin layers that make that display what it is, they are about two micrometers thick. Yet, they are so thin and they're laminated in between two glasses that the resulting transparency is around 80%. Small to medium, because of the manufacturing process, we can't go to A4 yet, or the size of an A4, but it's very rugged. Um, a little closer look at TFL, and TFL as such, because many might have questions. I acknowledge the fact that many of you might not even have ever heard of thin film electroluminescent display. They've been around for 30 years and we've sold 3 million of them, but you've never seen one. They're the best kept secret in the whole industry. But that's why I'm here, to change that. No, the thing is, they've been used in extreme conditions. I'll, I'll explain. A TFEL, or an EL, electroluminescent display. It, if you've heard of thick film EL or powder EL, they've always had issues with durability and life and brightness deteriorating over time. They are a different category. This is thin film EL and these, after 100,000 hours, still have 85% of their brightness left. That's 12 years. And after 30 years of experience, we know that this is so. They're inorganic, they're immune to the environment. Well, that's saying a lot, but basically they're between glass and that is as secure as you can get. They're emissive, you don't need a backlight. They're solid state, there's no liquid crystals. I have a car, a Japanese car, and it has LCD displays in the front and in Finland when it gets to around zero degrees, they get pretty slow. They warm up with the car, of course, but they are very slow for a quite long time. This has one millisecond response time from minus 100 degrees centigrade to 100 plus, because it cannot be affected. That's why we've got displays in the Siberian gas fields and Arctic areas, because they need immediate response. That I mentioned, inorganic, it's emissive, it doesn't simply dull. 
the one millisecond response time. And, and the beauty of it is we've been doing this for about 30 years with a black background that was developed to give a very strong contrast against the yellow. And it is very strong. But then somebody thought that what if we leave it out? What happens? Well, we had a completely transparent display. And the former owner of the business didn't really believe in it, said that now transparent displays will never fly. But we are thinking completely different, and we're taking it to completely different, let's say, heights and market areas. Resilient against humidity, shock and vibrations. This is something that is surprisingly often, not, not the temperature necessarily, but vibration in industrial and process industry and heavy machinery. They're shaking all the time. You cannot control the motions. Oscillating environments. These are good for that. But looking at the list in the last slide, you think that they're like tanks, that they would stand anything. Well, they basically could, but that's where we've been using them for 30 years. These kind of conditions. Extreme cold. We have one matrix display that was, was developed to handle minus 60 degrees because a Russian customer in a gas field in Siberia said he has to have it. So if the electronics stand, can stand it, then the glass can too. Understandably, we have a lot of displays in the military too. And they are ones that they appreciate the, the, the technical specs, but they also appreciate the fact that some models we've been making for 10 years without changing them, anything. So when they, after 10 years or five years, want to refurbish or replenish their, their fleet of tanks or armored cars, they can still buy the same display. We don't change overnight. So, you could call that these non-transparent are displays for extreme conditions. When you look at this, you don't see this perhaps automatically in something extreme condition. But we've been thinking that th this kind of a display has two market areas. It has an aesthetic value, this wow effect that, hey, that looks neat. Can I have a look at it? Could we put this in, in a stereo, in a, in a coffee machine? Could we make it, you know, differentiate it? Household appliances, white goods. And we got many projects running with manufacturers that want to try out and see could we you know look give a unique aspect to their product a consumer product but we've also found that there are lots of industrial heavy non aesthetic applications where a display that's transparent in your line of sight could be of crucial value the man here is a crane operator and he's looking through the floor, which is of glass, and he's got a container underneath, which is lifting. Now, we thought of what, what is the big problem today in crane uh, cockpits, is that they have a lot of responsibility, they got a lot of weight down there, they need data, but they also have to see what they're doing all the time. And in many cases, their steering hut like that is cluttered with small displays and gadgets telling them what that data is. Which technologies are good for these? Well, this is again our version of it, but it's not, it's not angled in any sense because we know that these different lasers, well, vacuum, fluorescent displays, TFT LCDs, they all have a specific area. Some have many, but some have that they're especially strong. And when you come with the background that this is a new product, technology's been around, yes, but not the product. We are trying to find which ones ours could fit into. And we found something around this, but this again is only mentioning a couple of the application areas that we're working on. Point of sale is interesting. Small optics has turned into something very promising because both on military and, and, and uh, on recreational. What is in the future? Well, if I knew that, I wouldn't be here. But all the same, challenges for transparent displays. Just a quick look at some of them. Brightness. When you think about a transparent display, this is around 1,500 candela, if anybody knows the numbers. That's why you can still see it. If it was the original version, which is around 300 candelas, you wouldn't be able to see it that clearly. This has to be so bright that regardless if it's a black background or, 
a white background, then you can still see it clearly. Because a part of the magic vanishes if you, if you suddenly, in some certain environment, can't see it. It isn't worth the added value and the price. Magic. You shouldn't see any traces of how it has been made. If you can see wires going in and out, or you can see a huge frame around it, it loses that elegance. Because the corning video films you'll see with transparent displays, they're usually one single pane of glass, and it comes out of nothing, the whole display. And to round off with what is always true is content is king. You have to get the content legible, correct, of course that you do with your customer, display, and also with the consideration of the background. It's, it's always a crucial importance to get them right together. Okay. And this specific demo I think it is about seven years old. It was when they invented the idea that okay, taking the back color, the black off, we could make something transparent. And they made this segmented display. So it's a speedometer that you can actually illuminate each of those segments according to the speed of the car. And you, those that drive automatic gear shifts, they'll know what that is. But it's a huge opportunity of potential. We're happy to be at least working very strongly with it and, and finding new potential customers. Are there any questions? I'd be very happy to ask them, answer them, not ask them. And if you don't have any now, or if you have less time now, then you can always drop by Compotech at that number to see me or to see the displays. That's actually seeing is believing in displays, so I'd rather you come there and have a look and ask the tricky questions there, because there will be tricky questions there too. Okay? Thank you.